What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekaWatt video and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a $1500 gaming PC build. With all the parts behind me, I'm going to run you through all the bits I selected and why, show you step by step how to put it together, including all the little fiddly screws and cables, before booting it up to see how it performs in some of the most popular titles. Without any further ado though, let's jump into it. As with all of my build videos, I'm going to start by installing our CPU and the RAM into our motherboard. I opted for the MSI MPG Z490 Carbon. That's because it's one of the better value Z490 boards around and yes, for this build I have gone for an Intel CPU, which I know is kind of controversial nowadays. This is their brand new Core i5-10600K. With 6 cores and 12 threads, it covers the multi-threaded bases like a Ryzen 5 chip would but it boosts up to 4.8 gigahertz, which is insane. To install this chip, you need to find the golden triangle on the bottom left corner of your CPU, and then line this up with the triangle on the socket cover. We're gonna quite simply line the CPU up with the socket, then return the cover back to its position. This little plastic doodad will fall right off, and we're pretty much done. I'm going to install our RAM next up, and I've had this RAM for a little while, and I've been waiting for the perfect build to use it. This is from Team Group, and it's their T-Force Nighthawk RGB. It's a white memory, so it's going to fit with the colour scheme I've gone for today. It's actually kind of quite heavy as well. To install our RAM, we're going to pull back the slots on the second and the fourth uh, RAM DIMM slots on our motherboard. You then want to find the notch on the kind of golden area of your memory and line this up with the notch on your motherboard. The RAM will then slot down nicely into place and with even pressure on both sides will clip in no problem. Repeat for as many DIMMs as you've got and you quite literally off to the races. Ugh. I'm next up gonna grab our case, and this is a really like kind of unique chassis because the motherboard goes like sideways and our GPU is gonna go vertically and it will all make sense soon enough. You wanna take the glass, tempered glass sort of side panel off and then do the same for the rear panel. <laughs> That was quite difficult. What we're then gonna do, once I've spun the case round again, is take this. Now this is a little brown box of accessories that we're gonna actually use to install our motherboard uh, into our chassis. And with this now laid down flat, I'm gonna grab our motherboard, which is quite heavy, and I'm gonna essentially check that beneath each of the holes uh, on our motherboard here, we've got a gold standoff in our case, which in this instance, we have. With that all checked out, we're gonna slide our motherboard into our case and feed the built-in I.O. shield out the back of the chassis just here. And then with that done, I need to remove this M.2 cover to get access to all of our motherboard holes before using this bag of included screws from the brown box to secure our motherboard into place. While our motherboard is still really easy to access and mess about with, I'm gonna install this, our SSD. It's the first half of the kind of storage solution for today's build and comes in from XPG. It's NVMe, which means it's super quick, and it's also got a bit of RGB on top, which is sick. We need to grab a smaller screwdriver for this and remove the M.2 screw on our motherboard. That's this little teeny tiny screw. We're then gonna slide our M.2 drive into place, which is super duper easy to do, and then fasten it down with the screw we removed a second ago. With our case just off to the side for now, I'm gonna grab our CPU cooler, and this is from Dark Sorry, this is from Dark Flash and it's their Symphony TR40. It's a really great value 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, which also has like a mirrored effect on the block, which is so, so sick. Grab the Intel bag, whoa, and take this pre-configured back plate and pop this through the back of the motherboard like so. And then screw these two brackets, that's these two, onto the sides of our CPU water block. With that done, we're gonna now pop the pre-included fans on the bottom of the radiator and install them using these super long screws. With that done, I'm gonna go ahead and actually screw our radiator to what looks like the top of the case, but is actually the back of the case, I think. before going ahead and actually securing the water block down into place. And 
I'm gonna flip the case over for this. With all of those bits installed, we're gonna pop our power supply in next before the graphics card, which I know you're all waiting for. This is the Corsair CX750M. I use it all the time, and that's for one reason. It's a great value, semi-modular power supply unit that's pretty easy to get hold of at the moment. You're gonna need to take one of these, a six plus two pin PCIe power cable, as well as one of these, a SATA power cable, and the rest you can just pop back into the box. Once we've clipped these into our power supply, we're gonna thread it through the back of the case just like so, and use these four screw holes with these included power supply screws to secure it into place. We're then gonna run a four plus four pin CPU power cable through that grommet at the top of the case and clip it into place, as well as running a 20 plus four pin motherboard power cable. That's the big one. The final thing we need to do before we pop our graphics card in is some of our front panel cables. The first is our USB 3, which runs to the side of the motherboard or the bottom of our case and is keyed, so we'll only go in one way. It's a similar story for HD audio, which runs up here to the top left. It's got a pin missing, so once again, we'll only go in one way. Finally, we've got our front panel cables. I'm gonna time lapse this, but I will pop a diagram on your screen now so you can follow along nice and easily. Don't panic if you get these the wrong way around. Nothing will explode. You'll just have to kinda rewind and start again. All right then, that's now done, which means it's time to pop in this, our graphics card. This is from MSI. Oops, that wasn't a good idea. This right here is the RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio. It's gonna look insane in this case and is a kind of a 4K powerhouse, but also really great for 1440p high frame rate gaming. To install our graphics card, we first need to pop down the retention clip on our PCIe slot just like so. We're then gonna shadow the graphics card itself over the slot and boy, that's really, really tight um, before finding out which of these PCIe slot covers need removing. We can then clip the graphics card in for real this time and secure it down into place. All right then, the system is starting to look unreal. Before I actually boot this machine up to see how it looks and more importantly, how it performs, I'm gonna whack in a couple of extra RGB fans I picked up, but I'll link them alongside all the other parts in the description below. Right then, now that we've put this system together and seen how insane it looks when it's all powered up, let's dive into some performance numbers and see just how well it performs in some of the most popular titles. Kicking it off with GTA 5, and we couldn't be going more mainstream, 4K very high settings, we're looking 50 to 60 FPS in the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode. That means we get some really repeatable results and you can go back to my old builds and compare them if you wish. 1440p would easily get you over that 100 FPS mark. Call of Duty's Warzone is over 100 FPS most of the time, but that is at 4K high settings with RTX disabled. The free to play Battle Royale doesn't work too great with RTX. Here the game looks fantastic and you're getting kind of esports level frame rates at 4K, which means you could get 150 FPS if you turn down to 1080 or 1440p while keeping those settings nice and high. Next up is Battlefield 5, a game that I'm not that great at. There's just so much stuff bloody going on all the time. But at 1440p high settings with RTX enabled, you're looking 80 plus frames per second. Apex Legends is next up and at 1440p high settings, you're looking 140 plus FPS. Now that really is some esports level frame rates. At 1440p, this machine has just got bundles of power, it's insane. Talking of insane frame rates, CSGO was the next game I tested out. I know while it's easier to run, a lot of people want to see how it performs. So at 4K high settings, you're looking 160 to 170 plus FPS, sometimes just, you know, casually drifting over the 200 frames per second mark. And yes, this was tested offline with bots because it, it saves me getting, like, leaving lobbies early and stuff while benchmarking. And your server performance probably is actually going to be slightly better. 
Overwatch is another game that looks insane on this machine. At 4K ultra settings, we're pinned at that key 70 FPS marker. And I've got to say this game at 4K graphically is another level. I tested it using this monitor that MSI very kindly sent over and I'll link it in the description below. And the experience was literally unreal. They also sent this kind of low profile mechanical keyboard, which is sick and I'll pop that in the description as well. The penultimate game today is Forza Horizon 4. Literally love this game. It, you know, there's no major objective to it, but it's fun. And at 4K ultra settings on the ultra preset, you're looking 70 to 85 FPS. I mean, Forza Horizon 3 was great, but Forza Horizon 4 is even better. The final game on my list today is Project Cars 2. Here at 4K high settings, you're looking in the region of 150 frames per second. And what that indicates is that you could actually go for like a triple monitor 1080 or even a triple monitor 1440p setup and quite easily have that surround experience well over 60 frames per second, which let's be honest, is more than enough for racing games particularly. You don't need that super high first person shooter frame rate experience, but I mean, it doesn't hurt. And on that note, I think that pretty much wraps it up for not only the benchmarking, but today's video, the whole thing is over. But don't worry, I'll be back next week with another build, so make sure you get subscribed if you aren't already. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next Geekawatt video.